being saved. Uh, I'm glad I'm not the same man I used to be. I thank God for that every day. Uh, you pray real hard for me tonight. God knows all about it, but you pray that God will touch. I thought about, I sat down here this evening and, and uh, I don't know why the scripture came to my mind, but God just keeps saying the first chapter of John, first chapter of John. And every time I'd go to something else, God would say the first chapter of John. And uh, just saying that just brings chills all over me, the first chapter of John. I don't know why. All I know is I'm going to try my best to be obedient to God. and uh, Sometimes when God tells you to do something, it's uh, it don't make a lick of sense to start with until it's all said and done. And then you see the finished works of what God done. Uh, you better, better pray just a few minutes. Over in the first chapter of the book of John, very familiar scripture, if you will, turn with me and we'll begin to read till God tells me to stop and then we'll do whatever God wants me to do. Um, I'm uh, not much, never has been much, but I do know a God that's everything. Amen. I know a great God of glory. And I know He's my God. Amen. And I know I belong to Him. And to me, that's all that matters. Bless Man, I don't have to be the best of what goes on in the world. don't have to be the best preacher. don't have to be the best pastor. I don't have to be the best husband or the best dad. But I do want to be the best that I can be. And you pray for uh, my kids, my grandkids. Uh, Pray for all the children that's being bullied in the world today. Uh, pray for the bullies. That God would touch them. Pick their heart. And that God would just touch them in a mighty way. But you pray tonight, God being my helper. I just want to read just a little bit here and see what God's got for us. I, like I said, I'm nothing, never have been nothing, but uh, I'm trying my best to mind the Spirit of God. And you pray real hard. And the Bible said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was, was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. 
In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Amen. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness, to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. And the world was made, and the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of him and cried, saying, this was he of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, <clears throat> for he was, was before me. And of his fullness have all, have all we received, and grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now according to uh, the word of God it talked about the law and the Bible said that Christ said that he came not to do away with the law but to fulfill the law. I believe it was Paul began to speak over there and he said he would have known he, he was, even had sinned if it hadn't been for the law of telling him what he had done wrong. Now <clears throat> There's a lot of things that I have to uh, think about a lot sometimes, Lester. And seems like this week I've been um, struggling, just trying to find a place in the Word of God to read. I don't know if anybody else has a problem with like I do or not. And most people wouldn't admit it anyway because they're too embarrassed to tell somebody that. They have a hard time finding something in the Word of God to read. But sometimes, Jeff, I can't get settled and I just don't know what to do. Don't know where to go. Don't know where to turn to. Can't get nothing on my mind. And seems like I'm blank and just, just searching. My heart's a searching, but my mind just not willing. And can't get hold of nothing. And, and uh, this week I, I got in that situation and I just prayed real hard and and it's just like God spoke to my heart. He said, if you want to know something, just start back at the beginning. Bless it. <clears throat> my God. Now that brought the chills up my back. He said, just start at the first and go back to the beginning where it all started. And I began to go back into the Word of God and I got over in the book of Genesis, amen, in the first chapter. And I began to read about how that the world was out without form and void. And the Bible said that the Spirit of God moved upon the deep. And the Bible said that God formed this whole earth and spoke it into existence and everything that God spoke came to pass. You read the Word of God. All God had to do, Jeff, is just speak it and it happened. Right. But God reached way down in the depths of this old earth and He brought up a handful of dust and He made man yeah. out of the dust of the earth. And hey man, He created him in His own image. Right. And the Bible said He laid there. He's just a form. Without, he just void, amen. Yeah. Till God breathed in his nostrils and he became a living soul. But then he got to where man was so wicked that, praise God, God repented from even making mankind. Yeah. And the Bible said, amen, that God was going to destroy them all. Yeah. You know the story? Amen. Saw a man speak about the word love. It came to my mind. 
And he said what people thought love was was an emotion. But he said when you love something, you esteemed it higher than yourself. Right. It was more important to you than yourself. If I love Jerry, then Jerry should be more important to me than myself. Right. Amen? Amen. God loved you so much after creating it all He could have wiped it out and made it new. He looked down through the corridors of time and He had a love for you Mitchell Poe so strong that He valued you more than life itself. For He searched through heaven and He sent His only begotten Son. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And He sent Him to die for you and for me. Now that's the love of God. And we say we love one another. But praise God, the love of God, a man's not shed abroad because if it was, we'd sacrifice for yeah. one another. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. Come on now. Praise like God, if you love, amen, if I love Jack Farmer, Jack Farmer ought to be precious in my sight. Amen. 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 Praise amen. be unto God. Come on. Amen. If we love one another, we ought to be the most important thing in each other's life. You say we love the church. It ought to be the most important house in the community on the Lord. Amen. Come on. Amen. We say we love God. He ought to be the most important thing in our life. Amen. Amen. No wonder. He said in the Word of God, He said if we close up our bowels of compassion, you have not the love of God in you. If we see our brother in need or in want, and we shut up our bowels, then we don't have the love of God about us because we ought to esteem His needs greater than our own. Is that not what God does? Amen. He didn't skip and give the worst heaven had. He gave the best that heaven had. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Think about that just a little bit. The love of God. And there wasn't nothing made that He didn't make. I thought about what Brother Keith Rourke's told me more times than one. I'd be a whining a little bit. Keith, he's my venting place. You see, I can vent to Keith and Keith don't go blab it to the neighbors. Keith don't talk about me like a dog when I ain't there. Come on. And he's told me many a time it couldn't happen unless God wanted it to happen. Amen. Amen. So he said if God's letting it happen, you know God's going to take you through it. Amen. But you see, all we can see is what's in front of us. We can't see the outcome and we know God's got it because He loves us. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. He esteemed you higher than the riches of glory. Right. Thought you was more precious than anything. Amen. Because He gave the best heaven had to buy your ransom. Right. Amen. Amen. The cost was paid on Calvary's mountain. Amen. An atonement was paid. They took the blood of the Lamb. Amen. 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 Yeah. To signify, sanctify, and regenerate my soul. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Ain't any one of you sitting here tonight that's perfect. And God knows that. And ain't it amazing that He loves us anyway? Amen. Loves us anyway, as failable as we are. Amen. Amen. 
God's good, ain't it? But the Bible said old John began to preach, and you pray just a minute. I actually thought about this reading, it took us several months, but I thought about this going up, this reading the first chapter, first uh, chapter of every book in the Bible, amen, until we got to the end. You see, you got to start at the first before you can get to the last. Right. Heard an old preacher preach, and I don't know why it's coming on my mind, but I'm going to. I'm just going to mind the Spirit of God. My body's wore out. The voice comes and goes. It's been a tough week this week. But there's an old preacher preached about getting salvation. And he said, it's like a ball game, a baseball game. And he said you could run, you could knock it out of the field and you could run all the way around the bases and get back home. But if you didn't touch first base, you were out. Amen. 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 Without finding Jesus, and without finding yourself guilty and lost, as the sister said, Amen, stood there in the courtroom guilty, Guilty as charged. Until people see themselves guilty and lost without God, Jeff, they'll never be saved. Right. Amen. 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 There's people right now in the world today, amen, that's never... A, I even heard a preacher stand in the pulpit one night, me and Keith, I don't even remember where he's at, way over in the country somewhere. That man stood and said he'd never seen him. Me and Keith both looked at one another. I ain't gonna preach on that. <laughs> but people with that state of mind, how can you be saved if you've never been lost? Amen. Amen. How can you be forgiven if you've never been guilty? You can't, can you? Amen. Amen. You've got to first see yourself lost and in need of a Savior. Amen. Then God can save you. Amen. Amen. A uh, young lady got in touch with me this week and she'd heard some preaching on YouTube. Actually, she messaged me and wanted to know how she could hear more preaching and I sent her to YouTube. And she texted me back and she said that she said, Preacher, she said, I know that I'm lost. And she said, you pray that I could be saved. Right, and I led her in the Word of God and I told her, I said, uh, you just give your heart and soul to Jesus. He'll do the saving. Amen. The first step is realizing you're lost. Amen. And I'm looking for a text, Brother Mike, for her to tell me that she gave her life to Jesus. Amen. And that's the goal in life to win people to the Lord. But I'm not going to stay before you very long. The Bible said that John came as a light for Christ. He wasn't the light, but he was sent to bear witness to the light. And the Bible said, Amen. It says in the 18th verse, No man hath seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. Amen. And this is the record of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask Him, Who art thou? He confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked Him, What then? Art thou lies? And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the, the way of the Lord as Said the prophet, I say, say, man, praise God. All John done was preached repentance yeah, right. from the very beginning. Yeah. 
When he come out of the wilderness and he's camel hair, girdle, amen, eating amen. locusts and wild honey, amen. the first message he ever preached was repenting yep. for the kingdom of heaven was at hand, amen. Without repentance, you can't get there. Amen. amen. I never realized that I was anything. <clears throat> Thank you, Jerry. We went over in Damascus to help little brother Tim Barr in a revival meeting in the pavilion over there in the park. Nobody showed up. Poor old Tim was heartbroken and He's discouraged because people all over that country, all the preachers said they'd bring her congregation and help him and nobody showed up, Jeff. And I got up and tried, I, heard, I just felt his pain and I was trying to open up for prayer and um, help Brother Tim and explain to him not to worry, God is still in control. Amen. And the Word of God began to flow and and in a few minutes I saw two young people come up through the park and it's dark and they come up and sat down on a picnic table and I just kept a preaching and boy God was a blessing me. I could feel heaven all over the place. And a few minutes the young girl got up and she walked across the picnic table and come around and you sat down in the congregation. A few minutes she came and gave her life to Jesus. Amen. 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 God saved that night. You see, if Brother Tim hadn't have been there, there wouldn't have been a meeting going on. That's right, that's right. Somebody missed out and it wasn't us. Amen. But we began the fellowship that night and I'll never forget what she, showed, what she said to me and it became reality, Cody. We're shaking hands and she's crying, still crying and everybody just shaking her hand and telling them how proud they was of her giving her life to Christ and and I walked over and I told her, I said, Honey, find you a Bible-believing church that an old man of God's a preaching the truth. Get baptized, join that church. And I said, Grow in the, in the grace and the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. She started to cry and she said, My God, that's the voice. And I said, What? She said, That's the voice that I heard. Over all, over all the things that was going on in the festival, amen, in Damascus, way down the road down there, she said, I heard that voice. Amen. And she said, that voice was what brought me to this picnic table amen. and brought me to Jesus. Amen. amen. John said he wasn't that light, but he sent to bear witness of that light. Amen. You see, I'm nothing, amen. I, but I am one of the voices that's, that's right. crying in the wilderness. Repent. Amen. 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 And be saved. Amen. 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 God just needs somebody for a voice to speak. Amen. And I tell them all the time, Jerry, the Bible said that God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. And I said, you hit me right on the head. Because I know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. All we are is a mouthpiece for God, a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Amen. Make straight the paths of the Lord. It's a straight and narrow way. All, all John ever preached was repentance. Read the Word of God. All the men of God preached was repentance. And, and I'm going to make a statement. And if you read the New Testament, we've got all kinds of theologians in the world today and people that's analyzed the book and they know more than this one and they know more than that one. But if you read the Word of God and you read the New Testament, they tell me that the Old Testament's out of date. You've got to go with the New Testament. Bless you, Lord. 
can't go with the Old Testament, it don't count anymore. I ain't going to get in on that. But the preaching that John and Paul and Matthew and Mark and Luke and John and all in Philip and all these preachers that was in the New Testament, you know who they preached to? The church. And you know what they was telling the church? Make ready. Amen. The bridegrooms are coming. Amen. Read it and see what I'm telling you. Amen. They were getting God's people cleaned up and ready to go. Amen. Amen. We're living in a day and time where God's people are so deadly in sin. I've said it many times. You can't tell the church from the world or the world from the church. They've got some worldlings in church that you can't tell them apart till you walk with them a day or two. Amen. 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 No wonder people's being deceived. But it was ready, getting the church ready to leave this world. Amen. <laughs> Amen. If you read the old learn the word of God, he said, Whosoever will come and drink the water of life freely. Right. They salvation for the lost. But God was getting His bride ready. Amen? Even in the book of Ephesians, I thought Mitchell was going to read it this evening. But if you go on over in the book of Ephesians, He told him, He said, He told how the husband's supposed to treat the wives. To love him as Christ loved the church. Amen? Christ died for the church. Amen. But he goes on to tell them that he washed them by the water, which is the Word of God, to cleanse them, yeah. cleanse them by the water, which is the Word of God, to present them unto himself a church without spot and blameless. Amen. 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 We're going to be purified, glorified. Yeah. Cleaned up and ready to go. He's getting us ready from the beginning to the end. He said, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm just hitting a lick here and there, but I'm telling you folks, God knows what He's doing, I know. And I believe if we'll just listen to what the Word of God says and stay in the book, I think we'll make it, don't you? Amen. I know we'll make it, Mitchell, if we stay under the blood. The Bible said to abide in Him. Paul told them over there on the ship, he said, there won't be a soul lost, just abide in the boat. Stay in the ship. He said, and people think that people ain't going to make it. Those that saved by the grace of God is going to make it. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. When the ship was broken up, He told them, He said, now if you read the Word of God, some had called They yeah. sick, wasn't they? Amen. Malnutrition. Yeah. They weak. There's a whole lot of God's people that's weak today yeah. because of malnutrition. Amen. Can I get it? Amen. 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 But He told them whenever the ship was on the ground, it began to break up. Amen. He told him, he said, you that can swim, just jump in and swim on the shore. But he said, there is weak and can't. Get a hold of a piece of the boat yeah. and hold on. Amen. Amen. That's good advice for anybody. Amen. Get a hold of Jesus and hold on. Because I'm going to tell you right now, church, you ain't seen nothing yet. What you're fixing to face. Amen. 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 Get ready. Hold on. Somebody said something today. And just chimed that word love again. Said God's people are just going to have to hold on to one another. And keep loving one another. Amen. Just hold on a little longer. It ain't going to be long. Sister, I prayed for you all day today. I hope the throwing up stopped. Amen. You have a good day today.
Amen. I thought about you all day today. You see, you care about people when you love God. Amen. Amen. But you pray. Pray pray for all those that said need. Pray for the revivals. Pray for my voice. God give me some air. Um, just pray for one another. We didn't and I thought about we were just sitting here and I sat down beside Brother Cody and I thought about what God said. Pray for us that we might have an unction to preach the gospel. Amen. It's our job to pray for you that you would have the unction to preach the gospel. Amen. If God's called him to preach, it's our job as a church to pray that God will give him the unction to preach. Amen. 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 Come on. Amen. Just like learning to walk. I can give you some advice. Take it slow. Because falling hurts. If God's called you to preach, if you fall, you still going to have to get up and go on and preach. Amen. It's a lot easier to take it slow than it is to apologize. The flesh don't like to apologize. There'll be times you'll say things that don't sound right and people take it wrong. Amen. Choose your words. It's our job to pray for you. And I'm praying for you. I thought about you for two days. Amen. Praying for you. Thought about things. He's come into this thing and God said God called him to preach. He's come into this thing to the level fire and praise God you've got a rough road, my brother. And that's not to discourage you. Amen. And I'll tell you this, as long as you stay in this King James Bible from cover to cover, I got you back with the moment you get out of it. Amen. We'll talk it over. But I love him. Amen. He's part of this church and we love him. And we appreciate him. We need to pray for him. And if he makes mistakes, don't jump on him and throw him out and beat up on him. Just pray for him and help him. Because he's not I thought the other day, I thought this week how it was when I started out. Mm -mm. I've always had a big mouth. And sometimes my mouth run away with my mind and I'd say things that just didn't sound too good sometimes. And you can I'm being honest. And I thought to myself, how many of the old preachers or how many church members would have liked that took me around the building and wore me out? But somebody prayed for me. Amen. And I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to give you some advice. Take it slow. <coughs> Don't stand until God lets you know you've got to stand. Don't stand on your own because that's when you're going to mess up. I promise you that. But I love you. I love this church. Amen. I appreciate Brother Rick. Amen. I don't know. It's been a long time since Rick didn't call. It. call it, he calls every morning. We talk every morning. Amen. Sort of like a ritual, ain't it, Rick? I think there's something wrong with Rick don't call. But pray for Rick. He's doing a lot better and he's got a long ways to go, but he, God's going to change his life. Amen. Pray for the kids in school. A lot of going on. Amen. Pray for these little ones growing up. Amen. Little Sam. He's fixing to get a really good awakening and he's going to have a baby brother or sister for a long. He's going to have to share mom and dad. Amen. It ain't going to be easy. Pray for my sisters. Amen. Pray about Jack. I appreciate it. Everybody's here. But just pray for us. We just I, I just want to do better. Amen. I'd like to just do better. 
I'd like to have more power in my life. Amen. I'd like to get in situations, I'd like to know just exactly what I need to say. Instead of standing there stuttering, wanting to say something to the right thing. Amen. I appreciate you, Jim. Get you a song of this fellowship, praise God. I, I appreciate this. I appreciate Wednesday night service. Amen. Amen. And I would appreciate it if you folks would pray for me going down in the country. It's a long way down there in the Garden of Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, I need a voice and I need the power of God in my life, Brother Cody. And uh, pray for all these young preachers in need of prayer. So we don't, I'm going to hush. I ain't keep you here all night. But if you're searching for an night, you start at the beginning. Amen. <laughs>